Hey guys, so this time we're going to be looking at uh, something I covered previously on my channel, which is PIC. PIC is basically a way to draw images and all sorts of shapes using trough, and it really acts as a simple wrapper around making interesting pictures without too much extra work. And so because of that, you can do some really interesting stuff, and that's what we'll be getting into today. We're going to be working with colors, we're going to look at filling in shapes, and we're going to look at a couple extra stuff like splines, which I didn't really get to talk about in my previous video, and maybe we'll get to go even further. We'll see how far we get. And since last time I tried to just teach it more like a tutorial, I'm going to try out something different, and this time we're going to actually try and learn by example. So for this, I'm actually going to be making a Christmas tree. It, I know that might sound a bit strange since Christmas was literally the other day, but I tried this out the other day just to see how difficult something like this would be, trying to do something... That would be a bit more than a diagram, which is what a lot of people use it for. I kind of wanted to do something like this, and it actually went pretty well, so I figured I would make a video on it. Before we get right into it, I want to actually check that you guys are keeping up. So if you guys make a picture with this sort of stuff, throw something down in the comments linking to it or giving me any information on where I can go ahead and check out your guys' pictures, because I really want to see what you guys are doing with this. I want to try and build more of a community around Groff and Trough, because at the current moment, the only people that are talking about it are mostly in my Discord. If you're not in my Discord, feel free to join up, feel free to hit me up, I'd love to hear more about what you guys are doing with Trough, and I really enjoy making this sort of content. It's not my most popular content, so if you guys want to help support me, make sure to like, subscribe, and hit that bell icon so you guys get notified of my next video. Anyways guys, now we can get into the topic for today's video. Alright, so really simple to start out, I've just got a really quick template, uh, I just made a title, the author is from Gavin. And then I just did this to basically skip over the first heading. And so if you just took this, you could actually compile it using this. So grof dash p for pick, dash ms for the ms macros, and then dash t pdf or capital T pdf to make it into a pdf, and then our file, and then our output pdf. So pretty simple. And then if you guys are using a different version of trough, you probably know how to use pick with it. Uh, that was just a really quick refresher. So the first thing I wanted to do was try and draw a branch for the tree. So we're going to go ahead and get started with that. All right, so since we're starting off with the branches, we're actually going to use spline, which is basically a way to make a line that curves. So just to show it off, we're going to do spline. And if I just did spline, you'll see that we get a nice straight line. But if we want to actually angle it, we can do up right, and then it angles it. And then we can actually curve it using then uh, down. We get a nice curve and we can even do right and down and we can actually scale it. So we can actually change how down it goes. So now it goes less down, but the same amount right. Uh, this is super useful and I use splines actually quite a lot. I didn't cover them in my first video, but I'm sure you guys could see the use case for them. So now let's turn this spline into our branch. So we're actually gonna do left, um, then up and right. And so here is our first branch. So if I actually repeated this, You'll see that we get a nice little branches of the left side of our tree. But the issue is that this goes straight up. We want more of an angle. So in order to do that, we're actually just going to scale the left to 0.1. And then we get that. And then if we repeat it, we get a nice scaled tree. So that will be the left side of our tree. And then if we wanted to get a right side, we would do something like, um, let's see here. We would actually do, uh, we would change this to down, right, and then then. And let's just check, there we go. And then if we repeated that, perfect, all right. So that's just the start of our tree. So we're actually gonna use a for loop, which will basically allow us to repeat something. So we do for i will be what we'll be incrementing and what we'll be using as our steps. So we'll do i equals zero, and then we're gonna do two, and then whatever we want our limit to be. So we're gonna make five branches. So zero to five, uh, then we're gonna do do, and then we're going to do curly braces. This is basically how you make a simple for loop. And so now if I do this, we will get one, two, three, four, five, oh, six. I didn't really consider the fact that it has to increment one more time. <laughs> but I think you guys get the idea. So we actually have six branches. And so now, so let's just go up by one. There we go. We could actually make it go branches equals. And then now we have branches equals five. And then we're going to do branches. There we are. Now we can actually have a scalable variable. So now if we make this for loop again, then we can get the same sort of thing. And we don't have to worry about the tree being symmetrical because now it will be just as symmetrical no matter how many branches we have. All right. So now that we've got the actual tree, we kind of want to mark the top of it so we can reference it later. So we're just going to go top of tree. 
And then this is basically just going to be treated as if it was an actual object or a circle or anything like that. But it's actually just going to contain nothing. So this is actually just going to be located right up here and it's going to be invisible. So we could actually make this a box and then it puts a box there or maybe a line, puts a line there. But instead, we can actually just make it nothing and then it's ignored, but we can reference it later on. So now if we wanted to do center x for the x value of the center of the tree, we can actually just do top top of tree dot c dot x and that actually gets the x value for the center of the tree. And actually I'm not too sure if I just did this, if that would work. All right, well that will work, but we can just stick with the c there just as a quick example of how you could use that. So now we've got the center of the tree, so we could actually do box at, gonna give it this center x, and then we're just gonna put it at zero for the y coordinate. And then that puts us at the center of the tree. So that's good. And so now just to uh, clarify where the bottom of the tree is, we're just gonna go ahead and do, and so we're just gonna do bottom y is equal to last spline dot end dot x. And then that should give us the same location. So bottom y is now going to be here. Oh, well, we have the x value. We need the y value. There we go. And so now we have this location right here. So where the last spline ends. And its y value is what we'll be using as the bottom of our tree. So now we can actually change this to bottom y. And so we'll see that it's still there, but we have the issue that this is the bottom of the tree and our trunk is actually going into our tree. So let's go ahead and actually fix that. So we're gonna go ahead and move this down. So instead of doing at, we're actually gonna do with, we're gonna do dot n for north at, and there we go. So now we get the north of the box is actually at that location that we defined earlier. So this is super useful. Now we have the trunk of our tree. So now let's go ahead and connect the trunk to the rest of the tree. And we're just gonna make this a nice flat tree. And we're just gonna go a line from last spline to uh, box dot northeast and oh i made a mistake a uh, line from last spline oh <laughs> my mistake last box there we go and oh, oh my mistake i forgot the end and so this is why it's always nice to have it quickly compile it for you so now the other end of it can just be a line from last box dot uh, northwest and then we're going to do first spline dot start there we go and so now we're just going line to here and then the other one is going line to here so pretty simple idea now we've got this now we're going to go ahead and get a bit more complicated and we'll look at what comes next all right so now that we've got the tree generally laid out we're actually going to go ahead and actually make our actual ornaments for our tree so in order to do that, we're going to start out and we're going to make those little ball ornaments because those are the easiest ones probably to do. Uh, we're going to try and just do this semi reasonably. So we're going to go circle and then we're going to go uh, at last spline uh, dot end. And let's just see what that gives us. OK, those are a bit big. So let's go ahead and go rad uh, 0 0.1. So let's make it nice and small. All right there we go. And then now we're getting this little gap here. And then we're going to go move to last spline dot end. And there we go. So we've basically just put the actual actual ornaments just on top of it. And everything else goes back to where it should be. So now we can actually use a special keyword called fill to actually fill in our ornaments. So there we go. So that's pretty nice. But we run into a bit of an issue. You guys can probably see it that we are actually drawing over our ornaments. And the solution to it's relatively simple. All we're actually going to do is instead of going to the end, we're just going to go to the start. And then it puts it back down here. And we'll probably have to deal with this guy because this guy is being overlapped. But we'll deal with that a bit later. So we've got our circles here. Now let's just do the same sort of thing with this guy. And we get relatively the same thing except for the fact that we have a bit of an overlap. So the first thing that we're probably going to want to do is actually limit them because they are going all over the place. And we don't really want to make a separate for loop. So we're going to go ahead and actually use an if statement to limit them. So we're going to go if, we're going to go i equals equals. So to check and see if i equals something. And if i equals uh, 0, let's go ahead and skip over the 0. Then, uh, oh wait, if i, actually let's do does not equal 0. Then we're going to go ahead and make our circles. So there we go. And then we're going to do the same sort of thing for this guy. 
Oh, we want to actually make sure it doesn't equal one. I forgot that we started at one and there we go. So now we are cutting out all the extra ones. And so now we're skipping over any of them at the start. So we're not starting here and we're not starting here. So that makes things a bit easier, but we're kind of just using the exact same thing on both sides of the tree. So let's separate this out. So we can actually put circles here and we're going to actually call it a uh, ball is basically what our, cir our circles are. This, and we're going to use define. So define basically allows us to define ball. So now wherever I put ball will be where this actually goes. So now if I do ball and ball, then we get the exact same thing and it saves us a bit of repeating ourselves. And so now we can make some extra changes. So say if we want to make them bigger, want to make them, oh, well, that's a bit too small. Let's go one, want to make them very small. There we go. So we can make them as small or as big as we want. We're using fill here, but we probably want to do the same thing for the base of our tree. So let's go ahead and do that. So let's go down to the base and we're just going to do fill. And there we go. It's filled in nice and easy. And so you could do uh, some stuff with color. So this one is uh, Groff and GPIC specific. So uh, this won't work if you guys are using knee trough or any of the other troughs. So you're going to go and you're going to actually do a um, color. And we're going to use give it a color. So we're going to use red. And so the color has to be defined. And so here we've actually colored the lines of the tree. So now if we want to do the ball, we can do color red. And we get a nice red color for our ornaments. So that's very nice. And so now for the base of our tree, fill, we can do color brown. And there you go. So we get the very start of our tree. Mm, same for the other spline. So we get a nice colored tree. And now it's nice and green. We probably want to do the same thing for the line and the same thing here. Now this is getting a bit repetitive. We could actually define tree color and then Instead of actually using these guys, we can actually make it a bit simpler by just doing dollar sign, dollar sign to basically tell it when the start and the end of our definition is. And we're just going to do color green, right? And so now we're repeating ourselves a bit less. And so then we can actually change our color later on. So now we can just do T-R-E-E -E, color. And there you go. So now our entire tree is colored green. So now we're missing something that every good tree should have, which is a star. So a star at the top of the tree is what we want, but in order to make a star, we probably want to fill it in. And sadly, the trade-off with how pick works is that filling it in is only an option for uh, shapes that are already predefined. And so that's why when we drew our tree, only the outside of the tree is actually colored. And so this is one of the drawbacks that come with pick. And in order to actually fill something in, you'd have to use lower level um, trough features. So in order to do this, we're going to have to actually build our star ourselves using something a bit more special. So we're going to actually we're going to go ahead and move down to, and then just to mark where we are, we're just going to say hello. And there we go. So right here is where we are now drawing. So let's go ahead and try and draw this. So in order to use anything and just pass it straight through to trough, you actually have to put it in quotes like this. So if I did backslash FB hello, then we get a bolded hello. So pretty simple. So you guys can go ahead and use that however you want. But in this case, we're actually going to use a actual escape sequence to draw our shape. So we're going to do backslash D and we're going to make a polygon. So if I did a normal P, uh, then it would just be make the shape and fill it and it wouldn't fill it in. But if I make it a capital P, it will make our shape and then fill it all in. So how it works is like a polygon is that you have to basically draw your shape. So you give it one coordinate and then it will go to that coordinate. And then whenever it reaches its last coordinate to go to, it goes back and then it will fill in whatever space there is. So if we only had one coordinate, it's just going to be a line. So let's go ahead and show that off. So we're going to go one, one. So here you'll see that we're actually just making a line, but you'll see that this is actually going down. And that's because the Y axis is actually flipped because it's basically based on the idea of drawing on the page. So the Y is reversed. So that's a bit weird, but you'll kind of get comfortable with it after you practiced with it a bit. And it's also really nice because you can kind of create your own symbols in trough using these sort of things. So we're going to go uh, draw a polygon and it's going to one one and then we're going to give it another location. So let's go ahead and just go right again. We're going to go up one. So now we get a triangle. All right. So this kind of gives it a better idea of how it works. So it goes down one and right one and then it's going to go right one and then up one. And then since we're making a polygon, it's going to loop back to the start and then fill in the space. So you could actually make stuff like bow ties with it or something like that. But in this case, we're going to be making a star.
So to give you a really simple idea of how this is going to work, it's going to be really simple. We're just going to basically do what you've probably done before. We're just going to go like this. All right? So this is what our star is going to kind of look like. Um, that was really poorly handwritten because my hand is in kind of a weird position. Yeah, so we're going to start and we're going to go out to the left, across, down to the left, and then up to the top. And then it's actually going to automatically connect to this bottom part right here. So that's what we're going to do. And then we're going to have it automatically fill that in because when, since we use the capital P, it's going to automatically fill in all this space for us so we don't have to do it ourselves. Pretty simple. All right, so let's go ahead and get started. So we're going to go ahead and go up. So we're going to go up right here and to the left. So left, then up. And let's just go ahead and see how that looks. All right, and then we're going to go across. So we don't need, or actually we're going to go one and then zero. So we don't need to change the Y value but we do need to go to the right. So let's see how that goes out and across. And actually just to make things easier, I'm just gonna put hello to kind of show where we finished, all right? So that's how we're going across. And then we're gonna go ahead and we're actually gonna go, um, we're gonna go left now. So we wanna go negative one to go left. And then we're going to go down one. All right, and so now we've gone up to the left, across and then down. So now all we have to do is just go up and to the middle so we're gonna go uh, 0 0.5, or actually no, we're gonna wanna go negative and we're gonna do 1.5. Let's just see how that looks. There we go. <laughs> oh, thank God, that went a bit better than last time it went. So I went up and across, and then we basically get our shape filled in for us. Now, just to scale this, because last time I was doing this, I remember that it was a bit too small for our tree. Um, let's see how it looks comparatively. Yeah, we probably want it a bit bigger. So we're just gonna go ahead and increment, uh, bring everything up, there we go. And so now everything is even and scaled up a bit and it should fit a bit better on our tree. You could obviously scale this up as many times as you want to and it should pretty much end up making the same sort of shape. So now that it's filled in, it is black, so we probably wanna change that. And so we're actually gonna use uh, M. And so here, so if you guys are using, um, if you guys are actually using Neatroph, then you can actually do three and this will give you yellow. And then at the end, you're just gonna do backslash M with nothing. And this will give you the same thing. Now, if you guys are using Groff, you're actually gonna use a capital M. This is the color that is used to fill. And then instead of a three, you're gonna do yellow. So there we go. So we have now we've got yellow and it is filled in. So now we can actually just do a define and then star. And then we're just gonna use this as our definition for star, right? And then we're gonna go ahead and move top of tree. And then we're just gonna go ahead and do star. Let's just see how that goes. All right, so we're off by a bit. So this one is gonna be a bit of a hassle because you kind of got to uh, move around a bit. So we're just gonna go plus and we're just gonna go ahead and adjust as needed. All right, there we go. So now we have our star at the top of our tree. And here's our really simple example of a tree, but you guys can kind of spruce this up a bit more. And now you have made your first Christmas card with trough. Anyways, guys. I hope that you guys like this video and let me know if you guys like this format. Do you guys like me going through an example like this or would you rather that I stuck more to the tutorial workflow? And I think it's a bit more fun, you know? I think it gives us a bit more time for you guys to learn a bit more about how you can use it and get you guys thinking. Use that brain up there. Anyways guys, if you enjoyed this video, make sure to like, hit me up on Discord if you guys wanna chat more about this or if you have any questions and let me know what you think. Make sure to subscribe as well if you wanna support videos like this. Thanks and I'll see you next time.